for halibut fishing nowadays, you need a big reel to hold enough line. Um, braid line is where everything's at nowadays. We don't use monofilament anymore because it's got too much stretch in it. Um, so usually, you know, 80 to 100 pound braid. You need swivels, three-way swivels or the corkscrew swivels. You need a McMahon snap. And I use 16 knot circle hooks. And then a ganyan line for tying your hook to your to your rig. Hey, we are back this week with Kyle Warman of Warman Sport Fishing here in Ketchikan. Uh, he runs out of Knutson Cove Marina. And since it's snowing outside, it's mid-March and it's snowing, we decided to come in here where it's warm. And Kyle uh, agreed to show us a little bit about halibut fishing. He fishes for salmon halibut ling cod black cod what am i missing oh everything everything under the surface yeah yeah, yeah we try to try to have variety and have fun with stuff so today he's going to talk halibut uh that's one of the special things we get to fish up here and we love to eat so why not let's uh let's <clears throat> talk halibut all right so for me it starts with the knot um for the new braids versus the old mono, you know, the old mono, you could do the, just the regular fisherman's knot and, and uh, it holds good. But with the new braid, it's, it slips. It's a pain in the butt. Um, so the knot that I use is kind of a pain in the butt to tie. Uh, there are easier ones to tie, but this one has never, never failed. Uh, I believe it's called the Bimini Twist. Normally you make it, with a longer loop, you use both your legs and, and uh, but you take your braid, you double it, you wrap it 15 times. I don't think I have ever tied this knot, so this is very interesting. And then you, you take all your wraps and you shrink them, you shrink that down. And then you pull this one back to make your loop the size you want it. And then you double, you double the line back on itself. I don't know if you can see that. And then from there, it's just a couple of hitches. And that one hitch really is enough, but I'm paranoid and don't want to lose any fish because I tied a bad knot and all that. So I also do a stopper knot. So I go around both of them and then around just one of them and then pull that tight. Oh, I see. And then that's like I said, there's a lot simpler knots, but that one has never failed. This is spider wire. It's really hard to cut, so he's the pro. Took me an hour to cut this wire. You're not supposed to use your teeth. <laughs> and then to attach your swivels, I just choke it. So you go through, through the eye twice open the loop up, pass the swivel through the loop, and then cinch it down on itself. And again, I do that just because it's never failed. Um, I, I don't want to say never, I'm sure at yeah, some point right. it has, but not, it not all solid. that often. Um, from there, I use these. A, uh, I 
think they, oh, it's a McMahon. I think they call them Hawaiian snaps. Um, so we put this in the eye of the swivel and then the lead weight attaches here. And then for the hook, there's loops and ganyan knots and, and all kinds of stuff, but the simplest, easiest is just a regular bowling. It's not, not fancy, but it works. It holds, it doesn't come undone. The hook, I use 16 knot circle hooks and I actually bend mine off so it's oh, off to the side yeah. just a little bit. Um, it seems to make it easier for the, uh, you know, for the fish to hook. The hard part with the circle hooks, especially with new people, is that you can't set the hook. So you got to sit there and just watch your rod getting railed until right. the fish hits uh, or the fish hooks itself. And then you start reeling. So the best thing is just to sit there and stare at it until you can't take it anymore <laughs> and then just start reeling. Um, but then the same thing, just a regular bowling. And then that just lets the hook just kind of dangle. So you don't have to trim the tag or anything like that? I mean, you, you can. Yeah. I, I don't usually because I'm in, just in a hurry. Yeah trying to, you know, get one thing done, move on to the next thing. And these hooks, if you, like, if you jerk it, I mean, they just come out. But if you just put pressure, you know, on it, and the fish is down there doing its thing, they roll right into the corner of the fish's mouth. And, you know, most of the time, once they're hooked, they're hooked good. And then just a piece of, you know, whatever we like, pink salmon because it's abundant um, herring works but if you're in an area with rockfish uh, you're gonna hook a lot of rockfish um, so that's that's the setup usually this is a little bit shorter but and that's it in a nutshell 24 18 to 24 yeah about probably 18 inches okay um, and I use uh, three pound leads. Oh. It's, a lot of guys have a bunch of different leads mm -hmm. and I fish, you know, a bunch of different areas. And again, I'm kind of, kind of lazier, kind of in a hurry. And so I don't want to dig through a pile of stuff. And so I just have one pile of, you know, the three pound leads and, yeah, and that's sense. what I use. And that'll hold Probably the, the most thing you're looking for is for it to hold when the current picks up. Right. Yeah. So the, you know, the, the current runs so hard around here sometimes it's, it's crazy. And then sometimes also we fish, you know, I mean, we fish down to 1400 feet. Um, and so you just need a bunch of lead when you get down that deep. Yeah. So I do have a picture. One of your guests caught, what was it? 320? 330? Oh, that big halibut. Um, no, it was. We'll show that picture now. I can't believe I'm drawing a blank on that. It was three something, three and a quarter. I don't know. <laughs> it was a big one. Yeah, yeah, it was big. It was yeah. definitely big. Um, and you know, the, the, the funny thing, uh, especially about that fish, is, is it didn't seem to, to fight a whole lot at all. Really? Yeah. I think the, the smaller fish fight a lot harder than the big fish do. Yeah. The big fish, you get the action out of the, the smaller fish, say the 50, 60 pounders, mm -hmm. um, because they're strong enough to pull, you know, a full drag on your reel, uh, you know, and get the fight. And so you get the action on the rod, you get them taking drag and all that stuff. The big ones, they just, when they go, they just go. They just, huh. they want to go that way, they just go that way and you can't stop them. You just have to wait until they stop. Right. Hopefully you have enough line yeah. and, uh, yeah. Well, what's all this other junk we got laying out here? 
Uh, jigs. These these are cod jigs. Um, halibut love them. They uh, they get hung up super easy. Oh. We have people that fish, you know, that, that jig, fish halibut, whatever, three or four days a year. Oh. You know, for a couple hours a day. Yeah. Um, and so it's, you know, a lot of them are really good at it, but, you know, a lot of them are, need practice. <laughs> Not um, as good. Yeah. We yeah. can be honest so. here. It's a fishing. And, all right, a lot of people Fishing suck. segment. <laughs> um, and these are kind of expensive, especially if you're going through, you know, four or five a day. Yeah. Um, cause they get hung up in the, you know, in the, the anemones or the rocks or seaweed and, mm-hmm. and once they get hung up, they just don't, they don't come undone. Yeah, so. Benefit is you don't have to go through all the rigging, the leads on them. Right. You so one thing the with on. these, uh, y- you should put a leader, um, between your main line and your jig because when you when you reach over the side of the boat you don't want to grab your main line you don't want to grab that spider wire or the the power pro right because that stuff will cut i mean it'll it'll cut into your hand hmm. um and you don't want to grab the jig because if it comes out and i've had it happen like just as you get ready to grab it the jig pops out and it sticks Sure. Right, right into your hand. What size mono are you talking? Hundred pound. I use hundred pound on mine. Um, that was a good guess. Because I use hundred and fifty pound um, braid. Okay. On my jigging rods because they get uh, they chafe a lot because your jig. So when mm-hmm. when I jig, I drift, and so we're constantly drifting over rocks and stuff, and it just chafes. And so I want a little heavier line. But I also don't want to anchor my boat with my fishing rod, yeah. and so I use hundred pound mono so that uh, it's got a like a breakaway. That makes sense on it. So if it breaks, it breaks right at the mono. I have never had a lot of luck with these myself. Um, I I tried. I tried at one point um, for halibut. They work great for lean cod. Mm-hmm. Um, I think honestly, my problem was patience. Like, you know, most everybody's. Yeah, isn't there. isn't that the problem with halibut? Yeah, or fishermen. <laughs> so these things, um, this one's a little long, but they uh, they got a really nice flutter action, and most you need a blooper reel. All right, so these rig up. Like that. And they, uh, so when you jig these, it's all about, you know, this kind of will look like a shrimp or something, but it's more just action and movement, kind of stirring things up. And uh, I want to say just triggering instinct. Um, so when you jig these, they, you know, they, your line ties here. So this just same thing for me, a bowling. So when you jig these, you know, it comes up, you know, like that. And this, these tails flutter. And these tails are first thing to disappear because they get just mm-hmm. chowed on. But when you drop it, this, the drag on this uh, turns it upside down. And so that stirs up the, the bottom. So most fish, you know, they, they're like everything. They want a, a quick, easy meal. And... If they think something's injured, or they're gonna they're gonna go after that rather than chasing something down. Would you use the ganyan on this, or like like no. mono? No, I would use mono. Okay. Just the same as same rig as, as something yeah. like that with okay. a with a like a hundred pound mono leader. Mm-hmm. So and you can tie those or crimp them. I crimp them. I don't like J hooks personally, um, unless we're fishing really really deep, because just about everywhere there is halibut, there's quillbacks. Oh. And with the J hooks, especially smaller hooks, it is definitely easier to hook a halibut, but you will hook every quillback in the countryside. Oh. But with, with these, with the, with the circle hooks, they hook in the side of the mouth, in right. the, the corner of the mouth or in the bottom jaw. 
these they'll swallow them oh. and so you can't get them back out without killing the fish yeah uh targeting halibut so canutes and cove marina we're on the north end of the road system in ketchikan targeting halibut you guys go a couple hours south or north or west um, to get your halibut right what about guys who are limited limited in boat size uh, expertise can they go anywhere for halibut yes and no uh you know you you can catch halibut anywhere i don't know how many times i've caught a fish thought it was a big salmon and it turns out to be a halibut mm -hmm. when you're fishing halibut they like either like a sand flats or like a ledge with a nice sandy area they lay in the bottom they hide in the sand and they hide in the mud um, so you don't find them a lot of times in real rocky spots unless they're out cruising right for you know cruising for food which is why you catch them in random spots hmm. i caught a halibut uh two years ago in 60 feet i think it was hmm. 60 we we're trolling 60 something feet um 60 feet of water so it was up shallower than that uh and then all the way down to 1200 feet wow wow but that's fun no <laughs> do you share the rod at that point yes yeah well i know at canutes cove marina that every year kids will go down and catch you know there's usually one halibut brought up over 50 pounds 50 60 pounds oh right off the dock right off the yeah. dock so yeah you know at the end of our dock it's about 100 feet um but i've always enjoyed that the guys are going way out and trying to fish for halibut and here's the kids coming out and pulling a 60 pounder out and i think were you here when they caught the 200 plus one off the dock uh years ago yeah 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 they were yeah. switch jumping through boats and yeah that was that was pretty comical yeah it, it was it was pretty cool to see it you know um and then it, it was just watching you know so many people involved in the whole mm -hmm. the whole thing jumping all over the place so they do they do kind of migrate around and yeah well they're they're a migratory fish yeah so they and they they're uh they're a predator and a scavenger mm -hmm. um so they're just kind of a little bit of everything everywhere yeah that's interesting and i know that scent has a lot to do with it yeah yeah so what 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 do we look for on that we like i said we use pink salmon for bait um and it, it's just a scent trail. It's like uh, like when you're hunting, you know, your scent goes through the woods with the wind. And so when you're fishing, it's the same thing that your, you know, your, your scent trail travels down, downstream of you. If you find a guy halibut fishing, always park downstream and uh, you'll make him happy. Park downstream of a charter boat. <laughs> you'll get lead thrown at you. That's never happened, right? No. <laughs> Not anymore. These things are expensive nowadays. Yeah, right. Water bottles are throwable, though. Water bottles are cheap. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate you coming in. Yeah. I know it's, uh, everybody's busy this time trying to get ready for the season, but uh, you know a lot. I've been halibut fishing with you before, and here's a couple of pictures on one of Kyle's trips, and <laughs> that was a lot of halibut. Thanks again, and uh, we'll see you out there this summer. Yeah, for sure. All right.